Hey, a friend, how are you doing? You know the drill. Be sure to holler at your girl on Instagram at Kristen and James and fill me in. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. Let me know how you are doing, okay? Don't forget. Please, don't forget. You know what? You can comment right now or reach out to me right now as you're listening to this episode, as you're checking out this episode. So I want to jump right into today's episode because I don't think it's talked about enough, but then it's always being talked about, you know? But from the perspective of a side hustler, I know there can be some confusion, reservations, or doubts around having a niche. And we can't have that. We cannot have that if you're trying to grow a side hustle. See, what happens is someone hears that word and automatically thinks they're going to be losing out because they're getting specific or they're neglecting other potential clients or customers. They want to sell to everyone. Everyone can use my product. Everyone can use my service. And I get it. I get the urge to want to reach as many people as humanly possible. But pause. Pause because really and truly, what are we doing here? (laughs) Right? So let's get into why having a niche can be so crucial, especially when you are starting out, okay? First things first, let me adjust my glasses. Let's take it back to the definition of a niche. Let's get really specific because you hear the word all the time. Some people pronounce it different, niche, niche, however you pronounce it, the definition of a niche. So I have a definition here. This is thanks to uh, Uncle Google. I asked him, okay, I searched niche market to be more specific because, of course, niche can have a couple definitions. And it says, Uncle Google said, a niche market is a very specific segment of consumers who share characteristics and because of those characteristics are likely to buy a particular product or service. As a result, Niche markets comprise small, highly specific groups within a broader target market you may be trying to reach. So to know your niche means to first know your ideal client and more specifically your target client slash audience. And guess who has an episode all about that, covering that topic? Yes. No, no, no. Seriously. Yes. Do you give up? Do you give up? It's this gal. (laughs) So check out March 2023. The episode is called The Importance of Knowing Your Ideal Client to Attract Your Target Client, a.k.a. Your Perfect Client, okay? We all know who an ideal client or perfect client is supposed to be, but you may miss the mark and how you're identifying them. So be sure to go check out that episode, get some more information, get some more clarity, if you will. So yes, let me use myself as an example, okay? Let me let me really define niche by using my, thank you, Uncle Google, but let me use myself as an example to really demonstrate the, and explain the definition a little bit more. So I coach, essentially, I coach aspiring women entrepreneurs, essentially, but my niche is nine to five women with a side hustle. It's very specific, very quote unquote niched down. So on that note, I want to share the four C's with you to explain the importance of being specific, aka niched down. And they are clarity, confidence, communication, and conversion. All right. Got your notebook ready? Let's get right into this, my friend, with clarity. That's pretty self-explanatory, what clarity will get you. Once you are clear on who you are serving, once you are specific on who you want to serve with your product or your service, and you become clearer on not only their needs, but also how your product or service fulfills that need. You're clear on their problem. You're clear on the solution they need, the the results they desire that they can get from your solution and how you can provide them with the solution in order to get those results. Sometimes they may not even know the results, okay? They just need a solution. 
<laughs> so why am I saying solution and results as if they're two separate things? Well, <laughs> that's where the clarity comes in, my good friend. Huh? Clarity. For example, I'm always going to use myself as an example. My client's problem might be lack of support or lack of resources or fear of failure, fear of judgment. And I can, for example, and I can present them with a solution through one of my coaching programs. And as a result, they can grow their side hustle because now they have the support. If um, a need is being fulfilled and they can grow their side hustle. Okay, that's like super generic, but you know what? You, I want you to to get it. I want you to. I want to keep it simple for you to get it, so you get it. All right, clarity, 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 friends. If you are trying to serve too broad an audience to begin, not only does your message get confusing, but your solution might not be the best to get them the results that they need if they know what the results are, what, what dis results they desire. By you having clarity, so do they. And they now know what you have to offer. You are clear and they're clear. You're both on the same wavelength, right? And with that, clarity will come number two, confidence. <laughs> oh my God, again, obvious. When you're clear on who you're talking to, you are more confident. You can show up confidently because you're like, I got this, right? You're more sure of what you're saying and who's listening. And that confidence can become so palpable. Your audience is really listening because they understand what you're saying since you're saying it to them. And who doesn't want to feel confident? Tell me who doesn't want to feel confident. I'll wait. Tell me who doesn't want to feel confident. That confidence, confidence will always be so powerful when you can show up and you say, here, here I am. Here's my product or service. Here's what it does. Here's why you need it. Here's why you should buy from me. Boom. And like, oh my God, yes, I want to buy from you because you're so confident. <laughs> if only it was that easy. Yes, but the confidence really, really, truly is palpable. And with that confidence, of course, will be the communication. That's number three, communication. You can say very specific things that make sense to them. You may even tell them that they have a problem that they didn't even realize that they had. Because now you're so clear and you're so confident, you can communicate it for them, to them. Huh? Brilliant, right? Once you have these C's in place. Because you're clear. You know your niche. You know their problems. You know their needs. You know where they're hanging out. You know what kind of content they like to consume. You, and you can really vibe with them. As I mentioned before, you're on the same wavelength. Your clarity gave you so much confidence that you can communicate so effectively with them. From there is a conversion to a sale. And that is where that happens because of the first three C's. Okay, so I like to use this analogy. Work with me here. Imagine you walk into a random room of 100 people and you go up on stage and you start speaking. And there you are trying to convince them all that you have a solution. For them. But you don't even know who these people are. Who are these folks? You walked into this random room and got up there and started talking. So in trying to speak to all 100 of these random people, you're actually confusing everyone. Now imagine it's a conference, a specific conference, and the 100 people in that room have a certain need or interest. And of those 100, there are 20 who for sure will buy from you because of clarity, confidence, and communication. They're actually there because they knew you were speaking. So they run up to you as soon as, you're not even off the final step walking off the stage and they're waving their wallets at you, ready to buy from you, okay? So instead of trying to speak to all 100 random people or 100 people who have one broad interest and then end up getting some maybes, 
and you can nurture those. You know, if you know you have, they have an interest and you can speak to it, you can nurture them. That's coming in a later episode. So, you know, you got to follow along and do all the good stuff. You can actually get 20 for sure, 20 sales as opposed to 100, like what the, what the H-E double hockey sticks was that? What was she even talking about? What was she going on? Where did she even come from? Who is that person? You can get 20 for sure sales. You can convert them because of clarity, confidence, and communication. So there you have it. The four C's, clarity, confidence, communication, and conversion. Now, something else that needs to be said is you can have more than one niche depending on the product or service or how diversified your offers are. Totally, you can have more than one niche. Remember, it's a segment, a specific segment of a market, okay? So having more than one niche, totally cool, totally cool. The main thing is when you're talking to one group, one segment, talk to that one segment before switching it up and trying to talk to another group or segment and et cetera, et cetera. Don't try to speak to everyone at the same time. That is basically the message behind identifying a niche, okay? Having a niche or three niches, whatever it is. So again, using myself as an example, as I said, I will always use myself myself as an example. I coach one. Nine to five women who want to start a side hustle. They need to jumpstart their side hustle. I also coach to those who have an established side hustle that they want to grow into a thriving, sustainable business. They want to get that strategy going and really grow the business. Turn it into a business. And then there's three, those who are solid and ready to leave the nine to five. They're ready to work on their 3D exit strategy to leave the nine to five to become a full-time entrepreneur. They're all essentially side hustle women, all part of that broad group, right? They're all essentially side hustle women, but they're in different stages. So my message and my offer and my group coaching programs have to be specific to resonate with each one of them differently. My friend, you're starting a side hustle, you're running a side hustle, you're growing a side hustle. Do not be afraid to have a niche. It can evolve. It will evolve. It most likely will evolve. Do your research. Learn what their needs are. If you know exactly who you want to serve or you have an idea, do your research. Reach out to people. Learn what people want or need so you can design something and speak to them. Use the four C's. And since you're doing research, how about you just like head on over to kristenandjames.com and book a 15-minute vibe check with me. And I can help you uncover your niche so your side hustle can take off. So you can be in one of those, one of those segments I just described just um, a couple seconds ago. Having the business is one thing. Starting it, having it. But for it to be sustainable, people got to buy. People have to buy. And if you don't know what people, you haven't figured out your niche, connect with me and let's get clear on that. Don't be afraid to learn about who needs you, why they need you, how they need you, all of that good stuff. Don't be afraid to define your niche. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for being here with me today. Reach out on Instagram. Visit my website, check out the previous episodes. I've got tons and tons and tons to help you with. I can answer any question that you may have. And if I don't have an episode for it, you can reach out to me at kristenandjames.com. Until then, I will talk to you next week. Bye.